Hey guys, Quizworth here again. Uh, it's been a while since I've been in a video and uh, I've got a couple new things. Um, so I figured I'd make one. Um, first of all, I've got a Penelope. And second of all is I've switched over from rolled cotton, cotton batten, to pretty much exclusively to, uh, to cheesecloth now. Um, I had cheesecloth for you know, taking the thread out of it to make my, I guess they've been called quig sticks now, where I wrap it around the, uh, the mesh. Um, since then, I've just been just to take cheesecloth and, and rolling it into into a wick. And uh, I guess the big reason why I like the cheesecloth is because it wicks just as good as, as cotton batten or rolled cotton. It's just as easy to work with. And the best part of it all is the fact that it's 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 measurable. You can you can repeat it. So you know if you if you if you got a good setup in a device and you want to know you want to be able to do it again, it's a lot easier to do with cheesecloth. Um, cotton batten, it's just it, there's just it's so random. You know you pull a you pull a gob off the roll and you know you you roll it up. You know and how dense are you making it? How big of a piece? Forget it. Um, but it, it still has its uses. But again, so uh, well, I guess I'll just. And what I'm going to do is uh, this video. I'm going to just quickly show why I'm or how I'm dealing with the cheesecloth, and uh, I'm going to build my penny with it. So let me just put the camera down. Stay there and turn on the light. There we go. I just found out about a month ago that there's actually multiple grains of grades of, of cheesecloth. Um, you've got really fine, and you've got you know your coarse. Um, who knew? Uh, this particular one is is from Bed Bath and Beyond. It's uh, it's unbleached, and. Uh, in Canada, it's it's like six bucks for nine square feet, where this is from Safeway. It is bleached, and uh, it's three bucks for like nine square yards. So there's a bit of a price difference. The bleaching process, or non-bleaching process, I guess if you will, it it changes it. It does. Believe it or not, the the non-bleached stuff from Bed Bath and Beyond uh, is it is it safer by the fact that they didn't run it through a bleaching process? You know, probably. But you know what? It, it they're both cheesecloth. They're both meant to be used in the preparation of food. So I'm going to go with the fact that they're both food safe. How's that? Um, the the bleached one from Safeway. From what I understand, and from what I've seen, and from a comment made by a, a guy on ECF, the bleaching process really kind of kicks the crap out of the cotton the cotton fibers, and it makes it wick, in my opinion, better than the non-bleached. But we'll just uh, we'll just go with that. The point I'm, the, the the big point I'm trying to make here is is with cheesecloth is is there are two different grades, but and they're two different physical sizes. But believe it or not, there's there's 40 threads in this one, and there's 40 threads in this one. The threads individually are identical, size-wise. It's just it's the tightness of the weave, and that's what makes it. The, that's the beauty of this stuff is is the fact that you know you, you get a you get a good setup, and you can say okay, well you know. On my Penelope or on my on my Odie, it's this many threads work really really good. So I'm going to continue with that. So like you know, you grab your cheesecloth again and you cut your same thread count. So no matter what grade you get, it doesn't really matter what you get from the store as long as it's got your preferred thread count. There you go. So. Uh, Having said all that, let's pick one of these and I'll just go with this one and we'll make uh we'll make the penny. Actually what I'll do is I'll I'll 
roll both into a wick just to show you how I deal with both of these, but it's pretty much the exact same thing. Just kind of fold the edges into the center so you're not dealing with any kind of fraying. It doesn't have to be neat. Kind of mash it down. Get that. And then once you get to that point, pick it up, twist it into a string. There's that one. Same sort of thing. So I mean, as you can see, you know, once you once you got your cheesecloth and, and you you've got your size or your then your thread count. Measure it so you don't have to count it every single time. And then just, you can basically make this kind of like cheesecloth string or, or thread or I guess for lack of a better term, silica substitute, preferred substitute. And uh, there you go. You don't have to worry about how much you crush it, how, how dense it is because you know there's only 40 threads in there so you know it's gonna swell once it hits the juice but it'll only swell so much and it'll swell to a predictable rate so again the, the there it is the beauty of this stuff is the fact that it's so totally repeatable I'm going to use the unbleached on this or sorry the bleached on this one just uh, for no particular reason my pre-made coil, grab my pin. I do find though that the coarser the coarser weave does tend to roll up a little nicer than the, the finer weave. Don't know why, I would have thought the exact opposite, but that's just it just does. I find that a lot of things in this vaping thing tend to defy logic, but it's just the way it goes. As far as tense or uh, how tough I wick this or how hard I spin this coil, I find that you know you just as long as you got a good sized pin in there and you wrap it like you with something that just sort of feels comfortable, you know it's going to be fine. Plus, cheesecloth doesn't really swell that much. Like as say as opposed to the uh, as opposed to the rolled cotton where you really got to concern yourself with it. sure I get that thing down on the ceramic one. The fact that they change these things so there's only ceramic going down one side on the Penelope. Well first of all I don't really know why they did that. I don't really see what the difference is but I tell you it sure screws me up. <laughs> Let's get that pin out of the way. There we go. Give it a haircut.
as you can see, it's just your basic. I mean, this thing is, it's an Obi build. The penny is an Obi. It's just everything is just slightly scaled down. One of the easiest RBAs there is to build. Let's meter this. Oh, you can't really see the meter on there. Oh, well. It's got to trust me. It's 1.8 ohms. My DIY Flavor Apprentice Blackberry Juice. Give it a good soaking. Okay, that's all good. Stay. Take a little chunk of your tail. I just recently started doing this, and uh, you know what? It does. It does make a difference. Lay it on top of your coils, or on top of your coil, just loosely. So you can still get air through it. See, and that's one thing that you will notice is, is when you use that unbleached cheesecloth, again, they say it's, I guess, a little healthier for you, whatever the case may be, but it does not wick as fast as its bleached br cheaper brother. <laughs> I don't know why that is, it just is. Oh yeah, she's popping really nice in there. All right, let's give it a vape. Oh, the camera. There we go. I'm gonna turn off my light, get the glare out of here. You know what? Almost right out of the gate with the. Um, the uh, non-bleached cheap cheesecloth. There's almost uh, there's almost no seasoning time whatsoever. I, maybe maybe 10, 15 minutes of vaping, and uh, you can't chase you can't taste cotton. It's gone. The all natural, unbleached kind from Bed Bath and Beyond at <laughs> four times the price. It uh, it's not as good. It's, that's all there is to it. Huh? Sometimes cheaper is better. But overall, um, again, the nothing wrong with the roll of cotton. It's great. I, st I still use it in, in, uh, in my SGV3s. And um, every once in a while, I'll do one of my Bluegrass Lover wicks where I rake it up a little bit because it's just it's quick and dirty. But I've pretty much 
most of them would go over to cheesecloth. I, the whole idea of being able to count the threads and uh, for for different devices, like I was like I may have mentioned that in my in my OD, the OD it's a little bit bigger. It it does 45 threads really really well. It doesn't matter what grade cheesecloth you happen to get from whatever store you get it from. Um, again, it just comes down to just count those threads out, and once you you find your sweet spot, just give it a measure so that you know you don't have to count it every single time, and uh, yeah, you're good to go. Plus, you know, cheesecloth is is like four or five feet long. You you know, sit there with a pair of scissors and cut yourself a nice big long stretch, and then roll it into a string, and then you just basically made wick. Because I know I know one of the um, one of the big things that people have with with using yarns or strings, whatever the case may be, is is the convenience of of uh, just being able to reel off a ready made piece of string and and just wrap a coil around it, and you know, it bobs your uncle, you're done. But in my opinion, that it just it just doesn't wick anywhere near as good as cheesecloth does. This stuff is crazy. It it really is. It's it's absolutely crazy. It, and as long as you keep it wet, it will not burn. And anyways, there it is. Quiz without.